Hello, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Andrea Baer. I'm the Climate Services Program Manager for the Western Region, and we are going to talk with our um, partners today at NCEI. I'm really excited about this because I think there's been a lot going on at NCEI, and we haven't had um, a good overall NCEI webinar for a while. We did have some um, some Climate Normals webinars, and we'll have a little update on that today as well. Um, but it's always good to check in with NCEI. They've always got new things coming, and um, they've had a big reorganization, as everybody probably knows. So I know some people have told me they're a little confused at who does what and who they go to for what at NCEI. So. We thought this would be a good opportune time to have a discussion. And at the end, uh, Jenna Myers has put together a nice schedule sheet that shows the other webinars that we're gonna have in this series for the remainder of the year. So she'll put that up at the end, just as a reminder to you all. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce um, Deke Arndt. He is the Chief of the Climate Science and Services Division, or since we all like acronyms, CSSD. And Mike Brewer, who is the Chief um, of the Information uh, Climate Information Services Branch within that division. And then we have Mike Bilecki, who is the king of our climate normals efforts that um, have been underway this year and um, nice uh, overall success of uh, launch on May 4th, but they've got some exciting things coming as we move through the summer. So I will turn it over to Mike, Mike and Deke. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, very much appreciated, Andrea. This is Deke uh, from CSSD, and I'm gonna uh, uh, we're gonna kind of hand off between uh, uh, sections of this presentation between Mike and Mike and myself. Um, but I, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, we'll go ahead and jump right in, Mike. If you could if you could bump the slide up, yeah. Thanks. So. Um, there's going to be a lot of details, and uh, I know this webinar and the slides will be available to folks afterwards. Um, but if you do take kind of anything away, um, uh, the things that we, the thematically that we really want you to 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 know is is we're still here. You know what you used to know is NCDC and the science and services and data support and technical support and climate services support um, that we provided is still here. Uh, we're still invested in it. We still love doing it. Um, our acronyms and some of the names and faces have changed as we've reorganized and combined with other data centers in NOAA. Um, but we're still here and uh, we, we're still uh, dedicated and in love with the work that we do here. So uh, the second thing is our products are changing. Uh, there's a lot of changes in the information landscape. There's a lot of changes in what we know and what the public wants and therefore what the weather service wants from our products and information uh, services and uh, we want to start a long-term about well, restart our ongoing dialogue uh, about you know what's what's best for our partners within NOAA and your customers and then uh, the third thing I think that'll become pretty clear is we're investing uh, kind of reinvigorating our, our regional approach and uh, Mike Brewer is going to cover that a lot, but basically uh, collaborators for folks like Andrea who try to coordinate and inform and and wrangle climate services at the regional level, we're, um, we're kind of reinvesting and reinvigorating in that. And so lots of details will follow that, but if you do take anything away, please, please kind of remember those things. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so what happened to all the acronyms? Um, so, uh, we uh, have changed. We are a consolidation of four uh, data centers. Uh, the National Climatic Data Center, which you knew in, in Asheville, was combined with the National Oceanographic Data Center uh, in Silver Spring, Maryland. The National Coastal uh, Data Center, uh, which is in Stennis uh, on the Gulf of Mississippi and on the Gulf of Mexico. And the National Geophysical Data Center in Boulder, which is like where all the gravity and uh, kind of physics stuff goes. And so we were combined into one headquarters here in Asheville, but there are those four campuses still um, work on the things that they do. Um, what you used to know as, as in, and we'll look at an org chart here in a minute, 
um, what you used to know as NCDC largely went in a couple directions. Um, the people who do the science and the services and the engagement and answer the phones and, and get out and kind of work in the field with you, those all pretty much ended up in CSSD. So the products, services, and the engagers uh, landed in, in our division here, the Climatic Sciences and Services Division, which we're all from. The kind of data archive pieces and the information technology pieces that were within the old NCDC ended up in our uh, two aptly named divisions, Data Stewardship Division and an IT Services Division as well. And they're kind of supporting the whole new enterprise. And that um, combination uh, of these four data centers has really taken up a lot of our last three or four years. So it's 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 been a you know a, a big lift, uh, not just in combining four campuses and get the, getting folks kind of culturally aligned in the way of doing business, which is a big deal. We all did things a little different way, but the way we managed data and delivered data and, and thought about data was was a little different from here and there. And so sorting through that has been a big kind of chunk of our uh, conscious time uh, over the last three or four years. And we're kind of coming out of that now. And um, we'll go uh, in the, uh, uh, to kind of who does what here when, when we get to an org chart. But, you know, uh, you, you knew folks like Jay Laramore, th there's a new name, Ken Knapp. Um, Rich Baldwin is covering kind of the stuff that Steve Del Greco used to do on some of the radar and access pieces. Um, we, we have some vacancies that you'll see on the street. One just closed, or three of them just closed yesterday for regional climate services directors. So we'll, we'll kind of go into that. Um, a lot of the, the individual folks that you go to for specific things like Bryant uh, Korzniewski for uh, data quality stuff and GHCN inputs, he's still there. He's still chugging away doing the same thing. Tammy Houston, who, who coordinates our national and, and regional and state partnerships uh, for Mike. Uh, Brewer and his branch, she's still around doing the same thing. And then Karen Gleason um, does some climate monitoring and the State Climate Extremes Committee stuff. Uh, so those haven't changed. And we have all of those in, in contacts uh, below. And then uh, customer service, uh, obviously still doing the same thing, still answering the phones, even though we're in COVID, uh, we've kind of figured out a way to man the phones, uh, still answering emails, still helping you, you and your customers get to specific data sets. And then, you know, one of the, this is an ongoing bullet here at the bottom. You know, one of the things, what does this consolidation bring new to you at, at the weather service? So, you, you know, we did this to be more efficient, to bring different types of data together under one umbrella. And there's probably going to be some payoff for you. If you're in a coastal WFO, there may be some new coastal data that the folks at NCDC weren't super aware of that may be able to help you. Um, if you're, if, if you're, um, you know, if you deal with, with large chunks of ocean or you deal a lot with, uh, you know, supporting fishery service, there may be some, some ocean data that, that's important. I think we're going to figure out in coming years that there's some valuable holdings from these other data centers um, that, that'll work. Uh, all right, uh, next slide. Uh, so this is just a map of of, of where we are now. So that um, that peg in Western North Carolina is Asheville. That's where NCDC was located. It's where the headquarters of NCEI and most of our division, the Climate Science and Services Division, uh, sits. Uh, there's four other campuses. We kind of went over them: uh, Stennis, Mississippi, for the coastal data mainly Silver Spring for oceanographic emphasis, and then Boulder for geophysics, and then our paleoclimatology, kind of the, the going back centuries and millennia uh, climatology uh, unit is in Boulder as well. Uh, some other features on this map, uh, we have six regions highlighted uh, that match your regions, the weather service regions, and uh, as uh, on June 20th, we will have six acting or six regional climate services directors kind of manning the stations there. We, we got uh, clearance this year with the emphasis on climate services and regional climate services um, to, to reinvigorate those positions. So three of them in the east, uh, in the central, and in the Hawaii Pacific region have been going on all along, but we're now able to uh, open up positions and even staff them with experts in the interim for the South, the West, and for Alaska. And that's good news. And Mike's gonna talk about that. And then uh, 
and so that's kind of where we are. We're a, in, we're a national organization. We're headquartered in in one to four towns, depending on how you look at it. We have these affiliated regional climate centers that are the uh, squares on this map. Mike's going to talk about that uh, in a second. Um, and uh, that's that's who we are. All right, next slide, please. All right, this is the uh, when I was when I worked for the state climate office. I used to make fun of the NOAA guys when they'd come show their org charts. <laughs> I'm going to do that now. Um, so the this is the NCEI org chart now, and I think it's important because Andrea said there is kind of some confusion, uh, or folks want some clarity on kind of who to call and what we do and what's changed and what hasn't. So overall, this is uh, what you're looking at across the whole screen is kind of the organizational layout of NCEI. Our director is Mary Wolgamuth, our direct, deputy director is Joe Pika. They're in the director's office uh, here in Asheville. We have uh, five divisions. Uh, the two sciency and servicey divisions are on the top. There's an oceanographic and geophysical division uh, and the climate science and services division. And that's like I was saying, that's where a lot of the folks that you're used to working with uh, in the former NCDC uh, ended up. And so we're, uh, I'm, I'm the, the chief of this division, Jeff Prevett, who's kind of comes from the satellite data record world is our deputy. And we have three branches with that within that division. And I won't go through the, the roll call of names, but I do want to mention kind of what each does. So we have a climate science and development branch and they kind of make new data sets. They take care of, data coming in, they handle it with a climate subject matter expert sort of way. Um, GHC and Daily, they work with the regional climate centers to get your co-op and ASOS data kind of crammed into our archives as soon and our products as soon as they can. So a lot of that work uh, goes on in that branch in the left. Uh, in the middle is, is Mike Brewer's branch, Climate Information Services, and that is all about customer service and engagement and um, understanding the value of our data. So there are functions within that um, where we have kind of the regional apparatus through our regional climate service directors and the RCCs um, that are managed out of that. And then the, the retail customer service, kind of the concession stand for NOAA climate information happens out of that uh, branch as well. And then over on the right, we have the climate analysis and synthesis branch. And that's a lot of the assessment and monitoring stuff. So when we make reports, we do kind of the monthly um, uh, climate monitoring, state of the climate reports. Uh, the national climate assessment is assembled and edited and technically and scientifically supported in that branch. And the, uh, the climate monitoring uh, stuff all happens in that branch. So that's kind of the analysis and uh, higher ordered product, uh, billion dollar disasters, that kind of stuff goes in uh, out of that branch. So that, that's kind of the big picture overview. And if you have specific questions, we can come back to the names and the, the roles, but that's kind of where NCDC, what you used to know, ended up. We all still have the same phone numbers and email addresses. Um, we just report to a boss with a different acronym uh, now. Um, all right, I think one more uh, slide for me. Um, so this is just uh, uh, actually a retelling of, of the same uh, information. I, I wanted to emphasize um, that uh, that group of folks kind of in the middle uh, of this slide. Bryant uh, Korzniewski is still doing Datzilla. Uh, I'm, I know many of you have worked with, with him. Um, Matt Manet uh, is still our GHCN contact. Tammy still does a lot of the, the national partnership work. Um, Karen Gleason does uh, really good um, state climate extremes work. Russ Vos is, uh, is uh, in an acting sense leading the climate monitoring group until we can uh, refill that section chief role. And then uh, one thing that we do here that probably isn't um, immediately operationally important is we've organized our catalog of products and services into 14 areas and we have, uh, I, I may be off by one, it may be 13 or 15, but uh, about 14 areas where we've organized all of the stuff that we make and the services that we provide. Uh, and we have 14 people that kind of uh, oversee those and keep track of what's going on. And Mike and I are gonna talk a little bit about um, our more formal engagement and the things that we're gonna be asking uh, you in coming months. And it's more than, more than likely that if you have a specific need or a desire or a complaint or um, 
a requirement for us that you'll end up talking to to one of these uh, leads. So I wanted to just throw that uh, on there, and they're kind of organized like you would think, you know, uh, surface properties, air temperatures, uh, ice and snow, uh, extreme events, drought, they're kind of in these thematic categories and services as well. And that's, I think, it for this slide. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to hand off to, to Mike Brewer. He's going to uh, go through, walk through a reminder of what we still do. Um, Karen Gleason had, on this link uh, available on this slide, kind of organized a lot of the best of or the most commonly requested by the NWS field products on that link. And you can kind of see it organized. And that's kind of hopefully our 90% of the time you'll be able to find what you're looking for uh, in, in that. And he's going to provide some of the details. So Mike, I'll hand off to you, man. Yep. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate that. Hey, while we're on this slide, I did want to bring up uh, one uh, point for everyone. Uh, as you see on this URL, it is still ncdc.noaa.gov. We are actively in the process of transitioning our websites over to ncei.noaa.gov. Uh, so over the course of the next year or so, uh, some of your bookmarks uh, may need to be updated. There should be redirects in place for all of these, so it shouldn't impact your ability to get to the same information or the same type of information, but those URLs will be changing a little bit in the near future. So I was just gonna walk you through real quickly a little bit, um, some of the routine things that we do with you uh, and for you, some of the things that we leverage your information and your data for to do the jobs that we need to do uh, as well. So I am going to try to get to the next slide. Uh, there we go. Um, so one of the things, the first thing I'll mention is our uh, Homer which is our historical observing metadata repository. You know, this is where a lot of the data uh, from the metadata from ASOS and the metadata from co-op that you guys take care of and collect and maintain in your system comes down and makes it into our uh, repository here. And it is uh, basically the, the long-term snapshot of the station history, uh, essentially. And it's there to help us uh, partner with you in the commitment to the accuracy of the climate record and making sure that we have that long-term perspective on where things are, where things were, how they moved, so that we can look at things like discontinuities and, and uh, stations that may have changed names, uh, but maybe should be threaded together, you know, things like that. And really it's, it's the hard work that you guys do in collecting the, the co-op metadata and putting it in that makes it into this. We also use it for ASOS and a bunch of other um, uh, types of stations uh, get mixed in here together too. And it becomes our central way of, of looking at the in-situ uh, data at least. And it serves things like uh, our GHCN products on the monthly, daily, and soon to be hourly levels, um, as well as uh, serving up uh, part of our access systems uh, tap into this in order to get people to the right information. So it's really central to what we do, what we do uh, in terms of a lot of products and services across the organization. Um, next product I'll mention uh, is one of our hallmark products, which is the Global Historical Climate Network, uh, which is that long-term perspective on the climate of the U.S. Uh, there are a number of flavors, as you guys know, the monthly, daily, and there will be an hourly version coming in FY22, um, or at least that's the aspirational goal right now. And that will be the replacement for what is now the integrated surface daily data set. And it will support uh, the production of the local climate, the local climate data product, the LCD. And of course, as you guys know, this is based largely on a combination of ASOS and co-op uh, to feed into GHCN, as well as a bunch of international uh, partner networks that come in through the WMO collaboration. There's also a related product, uh, Incline Grid. I think you guys have probably seen some of the, the gridded data and hopefully use it. You'll see some maps here in just a little bit that were built upon that. Um, but I wanted to let you know that coming uh, also in FY22, there will be a daily version of the grid, the data, 
uh, available right now. I think that data is available uh, on FTP only, uh, but it'll be available through our access systems too when, once it becomes operational. And of course it uses GHCN, GHCN largely is the backbone uh, for the interpolated data to the five kilometer uh, grid cell size. <clears throat> Next, I just want to mention Datzilla. Um, he mentioned it and mentioned Bryant K. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. I always get it wrong, uh, so I won't do that to him. Um, but he does a great job working with you all on making sure that we get the corrections into the climate uh, history to make sure uh, that it is as, as accurate as possible. And one of the things that I wanted to mention uh, through the course of this is, as you know, uh, the link to Datzilla changed from a URL at Louisiana State University to a URL at Texas A&M uh, University. Uh, and we'll see a little bit more about that when we get to the regional uh, side of things. Some more uh, routine products, you know, some of the monitoring things that Deke was touching on uh, when he was doing the branch overview, the things that uh, hopefully uh, help you all out. Um, the monitoring group, of course, you know, does the hottest, wettest, um, coldest, driest kind of comparisons, you know, adding flavor and context uh, to the data that's collected to put it in perspective to help people make decisions. Uh, a lot of that is served up through places like Climate at a Glance in addition to the uh, climate monitoring reports. But if you've been to climate at a glance, you know that there are uh, state level views and climate division views and county level views now, and even some city data on there. Uh, so it's really expanded as a tool um, in order to get the right information to the right uh, people in the right ways. Um, I won't say it always works. We know there's some frustrations uh, from your end and from other customers in uh, some of the infrastructure backbone that supports that and uh, how it goes out. But please know that we are actively working on that and hope to have that shored up in the future. <clears throat> uh, I will also mention, uh, as Deke did, the Extremes Committee that's working with you guys um, when there's a record. Uh, set or we think there's a record set to make sure that that gets adjudicated and entered into the climate record appropriately. And uh, the last thing, of course, being the climate monthly uh, reports and analyses, these become the backbone for neat things like the national climate assessment that then becomes a backbone for the IPCC um, report, at least the U.S. Uh, part of that. So long routes uh, all the way down into the things that we do uh, on the monitoring reporting side, but also on the way that the data gets handled to feed all the way up through those reports and the care that gets taken through the tools like that Zilla to make sure that things are right. So uh, one more here uh, that we do largely in concert with um, the regional climate centers for the actual production, but with input from a whole lot of you, uh, especially in the regions, uh, but at the field level too, in terms of getting information into our quarterly climate impacts and outlooks uh, reports to pager basically what happened in a region, um, what was significant, how's it likely to change uh, in the future, and what was the impact of that. Uh, these get picked up by a few tens of thousands of people that we know about across the country, uh, and many of them redistribute from there. So we're reaching a, a whole lot of people with these, um, and they provide valuable information, especially for folks uh, who are underserved. I, I know that a lot of what goes on in the central region uh, makes it into the tribal communities uh, and provides a lot of context. Uh, for what's going on uh, inside of native lands. So thanks to all of you who contribute to these and uh, add your expertise and make sure that they're accurate and can be relied upon. And as you know, along with uh, the, the production of these, uh, our regional folks also do some webinars uh, on monthly and quarterly basis. Um, interesting topics, uh, Sometimes there are uh, emerging things that need to be addressed. 
um, and things like coordinating uh, ENSO, uh, some impacts related to that too, you know, looking at some of the historical data to see what's going on with making sure that people are aware that this is coming, uh, working with the Climate Prediction Center and with you all to make sure that that information gets out in a consistent way to get to as many people as possible to minimize the impact as much as possible throughout a region. All right, so speaking of regions, uh, I'm gonna move on here into a little bit of regional coordination and services side of the house. <clears throat> and I just wanted to mention a couple of things and we'll see some pretty pictures and go through a couple of topics. Um, we're developing an integrated information services model across NCEI. So Deke mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm the chief of information services, but this isn't just my branch. We recognize that information services covers a gamut of, of activities from user engagement to customer service, but also to climate monitoring to how you put your data out on the website. Um, and this activity is pulling all of those people together to agree to do things uh, in a certain way um, and to make sure that we're making progress in addressing the needs of our users uh, and our partners as we move forward in terms of providing the information, whether it be climate or weather or ocean or coasts or geophysics, all of the things that NCEI is, is covering. Um, it also includes communication, recognizing that communication is uh, largely a, a uh, one-way user engagement with us uh, communicating out, usually not a lot of information comes back in through web stories or through tweets or through things like that. Um, but it does certainly help us in terms of uh, considering things like data access and how we get information back out. Um, another important thing, uh, Deke mentioned Tammy Houston and her role uh, in the organization. She's our national partnership liaison and uh, you know she's in charge of um, largely providing that you know sort of uh, higher level look at how we're playing nicely hopefully across all of our partners in weather service and OAR with the state climatologists with the regional climate centers and looking for synergies and looking for efficiencies and making sure that we're pulling our weight in terms of the things that NOAA overall needs to do for its users and its customers as we all interact with people impacted by the same sort of uh, information and the same uh, climate and weather events. So Deke mentioned RCSDs, our Regional Climate Services Directors, and you guys have seen this map probably more times than uh, you can count. Uh, we started with six, we lost a few due to attrition, the three that we still have are shown here in the east, the central, and the Pacific region. Um, the, there was a job on the street on USA Jobs yesterday that was a bundle of the other remaining three, which uh, will cover Alaska, the west, and the south. And uh, just a note on here that these positions will be changing locations. Um, to align a little better with that infrastructure that Deke showed you uh, for uh, NCEI overall, so that we make sure that these people have a home base and have some support uh, and aren't always just kind of left out on their own uh, to, to do their own thing, to make their own way and not getting the support that they might need uh, from the home organization. So the Western Region RCSD is actually going to move technically out of the West, um, to come to uh, Colorado to live uh, at the NOAA facility in Boulder. But I think he's, uh, or whomever it is, uh, once we get through the hiring process, uh, there'll be a gentleman's agreement with Doug that largely Doug covers the stuff that's mostly flat. Um, and then the RCSD picks up once the mountains start. Um, has been a, a pretty good model that has worked uh, largely. So there'll be some cross coordination uh, between the West and just a little bit of the central region in terms of that position. The Southern Region RCSD uh, was located in Texas. They will be moving to our facility in Stennis, uh, still in the Southern Region, um, but again, uh, homing them in our NCEI location to provide them some support. 
but they'll still be covering uh, the same states. And Alaska is the only one that's not moving. It will still be in Alaska, in Alaska, in Anchorage, Alaska, um, which is where it was before. Uh, Deke alluded to the fact that we are going to have some folks coming on board in the very near future who are going to provide some continuity between now and the time that um, whoever, whomever is chosen for the permanent positions uh, can get on board. But we want to start laying the groundwork and reestablishing the partnerships and working uh, with you guys, working with the regions um, to reestablish those relationships to, to get back to pulling our weight in the regions uh, so that there can be an efficient handoff um, to whomever ends up in the position permanently and they're not starting uh, from ground zero. So be on the lookout. Uh, for an announcement on June 20th or 21st, I think is that Monday. So in a little less than two weeks, uh, you should see more information about that. Uh, we're trying not to release the information too early because those people are currently in CEI employees who will be filling that role and they are working feverishly to wrap up uh, work that they're responsible for now so that they can take on this RCSD responsibility and give it the time that it needs. So again, be on the lookout uh, for that coming in the near future. I think mentioned the regional climate centers uh, and you guys know all about the RCCs uh, and the work that they do with us, great partners for product development. Uh, as well as delivery, the ACES system, things like XM ACES that supports uh, all of us uh, is a fantastic system to get information uh, into our hands quickly and effectively and, and let us do a little exploration uh, of that data. I will mention two things. Uh, we just recompeted this contract. Uh, it went into effect in April. Uh, so we're on a new five-year contract now. And through the course of that competition, it was competitively uh, selected. Two of the regional climate centers moved. The Midwest Climate Center, uh, which used to be at uh, Illinois, is now at Purdue uh, in Indiana. And the Southern Regional Climate Center, which was at LSU in Louisiana, is now at Texas A&M. Um, so we've got two new directors, uh, some new staff, and we're excited uh, to be establishing a new relationship with them to uh, uh, do products and services and make headway in the region uh, with some new ideas that they brought uh, and, and can bring uh, to the table. So with that, I am going to be quiet for a few minutes and pass it off to Mike Pilecki to talk a little bit about normals. So Mike, take it away. Okay, uh, thanks Mike. Uh, next slide. The uh, Basic idea here is just to give you a, a few uh, updates, um, not the whole story, because I already gave you a webinar last month on that. <laughs> the um, I just would like to say our collaboration with the National Weather Service Climate Services went really well in uh, and was a key to the success of, of this rollout. Um, I started having regular meetings with uh, uh, Jim Drzewski, Dr Drzewski, sorry pronunciation again um, uh, earlier last year and we've been having regular meetings ever since to make sure we're coordinated um, we were able to uh, send out a, a early version of the normals to the National Weather Service uh, climate services which were distributed to the uh, WFOs around the country we learned about some uh, general concerns and some indi individual concerns uh, through a, a, a nice process that Jim put together to funnel the um, information to us. We also received some direct emails that we responded to. So we probably responded to more than 50 individual uh, 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 issues that were brought up um, and we either accepted uh, that there was a need for a fix or uh, we exchanged information on things that were ambiguous or we also explained why we couldn't do some of the things that were requested. Um, but I think that extra communication was very helpful. Um, so we actually ended up submitting 
uh, improved versions twice, I think, to the, to the Weather Service for inclusion in, in their AWIPS systems. Um, I did a webinar, like I mentioned, in April 19th, and then um, also we created some additional information documents um, to help um, with uh, NWS WFOs in, in their inter interaction with the press uh, and the rollout. We did the rollout May 4th. Um, it was truly a massive communication <laughs> effort um, uh, from all aspects of NOAA. This this was done all the way uh, from our local comms office to the NWS, to the NESDIS one, to the, to the higher level OAR and NOAA comms offices. And everybody uh, brought this to the public's attention to all of our partners um, and it really worked out well. Literally hundreds of newspapers had articles on the new normals. I gave dozens of interviews. The We uh, took up one third of the front page of the May 24th uh, New York Times with normals maps and um, it was just, just really good. Um, and we also, as part of this, uh, released a new normals website. So this is where you would go for for normals information and for all the links to how you could get normals directly from NCI. Next slide. Uh, there are several issues remaining that we're addressing. Um, uh, we did get some requests for a few stations to be added to the uh, bundle for the National Weather Service, which we're working on now. Mainly, uh, we're, it's, a, it's a metadata issue that we're working right now. We'll uh, get those out there. Um, there was one uh, major issue that came up, uh, which had to do with Alaska. Um, it turns out that in the previous cycle, we um, were requested and we, we uh, agreed to use non-homogenized temperature data for uh, the locations along the northern and uh, western coast of Alaska because the the new climate regime and the and the and the rapid ice out in the in the uh, springtime basically created uh, what our homogenization approach was detecting as an artificial inhomogeneity in the record, but it's actually a true climate inhomogeneity that was being affected by these large changes in the sea ice. So um, we restored that previous practice now that we realized that through an oversight that wasn't being done and we'll release uh, this corrected set of Alaska stations soon. It involves about 25 stations overall including five that were in the uh, NWS AWIPS list. We're also going to provide some further documentation and explanation of the impacts of temperature homogenization on uh, that arise when you compare 1991-2020 normals to 1981-2010 normals. Um, the, the basic story there is that um, you have to compare apples to apples. In other words, um, we recommend that, that um, uh, we basically uh, have a different uh, homogenized data set now than we did in 2011 when the, um, the, the 81 and 2010 normals were created originally. And so you get a different result if you compare those to the new normals versus rerunning 81 to 2010 with the current version of the homogenized data because as you go forward in time, there were some discontinuities in the 2010s. And when we do homogenized data, we, we process it backwards from there. So it, it actually alters the comparison data as well as the current um, data. So, so um, we'll be uh, addressing that shortly uh, in, in the summertime. And then also, as was mentioned on an earlier slide, um, monthly gridded normals are going to be officially released this summer. The daily normals about March 2022. Okay, and uh, just uh, uh, next slide. 
just a few of the <laughs> update slides for, for the maybe two people that missed all this is basically the new normals are wetter east of the Rockies, drier west of the Rockies. Um, interestingly enough, not whole U.S. is warmer. The north central U.S. is a little bit cooler or about the same in terms of temperature normals on an annual basis. That's mainly in the late winter and spring months that do that. Uh, next. And uh, if you were to uh, compare all of our normals over the period from the beginning of the 20th century to now, you can really see the change in climate being reflected in those normals and you see how much wetter it is recently. And the next one, Mike. And it's even a larger change in temperature. You can see how the last few normals periods show the uh, in amplification of warming that's going on, the more rapid warming that's occurring uh, that reflects uh, climate change. Next. And then finally, we do have uh, updated our, our quick access for if you want to just take a quick look at an individual station on monthly normals. Um, and uh, that one will have have data um, uh, for both our 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 conventional 30-year normal plus our 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 new 15-year normal that we've generated uh, for users that need a a normal for a a more recent period a more um, uh, I idealized a representation of the current uh, climate uh, for uh, several different economic sectors ask for that and finally we also want to, that next slide yeah finally we also want to mention that um, all of the normals data is being loaded into the three uh, big data project cloud service providers that NOAA has this big data project for the cloud and and uh, these are just the catalog addresses since we don't have the actual address yet but um, all the normals data will be sitting up there in the cloud and easily accessible um, from there too all right thanks for a little update on the normals uh, you may proceed with your regular program <laughs> thank you Th thanks a lot this is Deke there's a we have uh, two more slides and I just want to emphasize kind of three bigger picture theme type things that we're going through in, in the kind of climate side of NCEI and some of them across all of NCEI, all of the different types of data. Um, and then, uh, so we'll go, you know, what's in the future on the climate side, you know, the national conversation about climate uh, has really moved on from, is this real? Can we believe in it? Um, that kind of dominated much of the last decade. And now the national conversation is really centering around, you know, what, what, what's in it for me? What's it, what's it mean to me? So we're emphasizing on kind of our science and services piece, a, a shift away uh, from, it, we'll still be doing um, monitoring analysis, but we're, all, we're paying more attention to extremes, impacts, forward-looking data like model projections and uh, spatially complete data because a lot of our customers uh, want to move beyond station and they want gridded maps with pixels uh, with values in them so that's probably something that you'll see kind of from a science and product standpoint um, looking uh, you'll see more of that in coming years uh, that's kind of on the science landscape on the technological landscape the cloud is a big deal uh, it's a big deal across NOAA, it's a big deal across NESDIS, it's a big deal across the country. And like Mike uh, Pilecki emphasized with the normals, you know, getting our information on the cloud successfully is going to be kind of a big stripe of what we do. Um, what that may mean specifically for the weather service are tools that are associated with cloud services, which are um, one way of calling them as thin portals, to help um, get you to the answer to a climate question rather than to help you download a data set. And so you'll probably be seeing a lot of development in coming years uh, in that uh, from our end. And then the last slide that we have today is about our change in our engagement posture. Um, like I mentioned, we, we did spend at NCEI uh, quite a bit of time trying to um, help bring these data centers together. 
And uh, we're now in a position, I think, kind of on the back end of that, and we've had clear direction from the very top of NESDIS that we need to um, re-engage with our uh, sister line offices within NOAA and make sure that we are doing the most important things that those line offices want. And so you're going to be hearing a lot from us, um, probably from you know, primarily from Mike Brewer, but from all of the pieces of NCEI, even the parts that maybe traditionally you hadn't seen before in our coast, coastal and ocean and even geophysical and space weather pieces, we'll be coming around in a fairly organized way over the next 12 months and uh, working with your leadership, me meaning Weather Service Line Office leadership, working through your office structure, um, through coordination points like the Weather Service regions to really help you know, ask, uh, you know, we, you see the themes here, but the basic questions are going to be, hey, these things that we're doing for you, do you still want them to, do you still want us to do them? What would you change? What would you like to see in the future? What are the science questions related to climate or coastal or ocean that you're facing? Um, if you, if we, if you had us, could wave a magic wand and have us do three new things for the weather service, what would those things be? Um, what are they about getting data in and out of an archive? Are they about answering questions related to the climate issues in your office or your region? Um, are they about answering maybe science or impacts questions? So you're going to be hearing uh, quite a bit from us. And I think our regional uh, folks will be kind of uh, kickstarting that in coming months. Um, but we're, what the, the ultimate goal of that is to come up with an agreement that says, Here's what the Weather Service says they want, kind of signed off by Weather Service leadership. Here's what we're capable of doing with that. Here's our punch list of, of work to do. And here are the things that maybe are, are below the dotted line, but we'll try to get to them as resources allow. And so there'll be, it'll look a lot more like a commitment um, at, on the back end of this once we figure out kind of what's, what's most important and, and what we're capable of doing. Uh, and again, that's a response to the uh, a, a reinvigorated kind of Nesdis philosophy, uh, philosophy that um, our other our sister line offices are our number one customers. And obviously, in the climate world, the Weather Service is the line office that has the field structure and the customers that really need uh, the answers the most. So uh, you'll be hearing from us in, a, in an organized way uh, in three or four months uh, on on how we're going to uh, pull that off, and we'll be doing a lot of this engagement. And I think that's our last slide. Um, when you download these slides later on, the next three or four slides kind of has the list of who does what. Um, and uh, that could be a resource. Um, that obviously, that changes with uh, attrition and, and promotions. But uh, you'll get a snapshot of where we are in June. And I think with that, I'll, I'll hand it back to Andrea. Well, lots of great things going on there. Um, Thank you so much, Deke and Mike and Mike. We we appreciate your time. Um, so we want to take some questions for these three. If you could type those into the chat. I forgot to mention that before. I'm sorry. Um, Jenna did put it in the chat, but if you could go ahead and do that. And <clears throat> while folks are thinking of questions, um, I do want to mention that we have recorded this webinar and um, that will be uh, posted where we keep all of our climate services webinars. And um, Deke and Mike and Mike have agreed to um, to share their slides with us. So we'll make sure through your regional folks that um, that those are spread around um, the regions. So uh, Jenna, do we have any questions yet? Um, we do have a few that are coming in. Um, okay. Oh now, oh, now they're getting long. Hold on a second. A bunch came in right <laughs> at the second I said that. Okay, I'm gonna just go down the line real quick. We do have a um, maybe about 10 minutes to get to them. Um, will NCEI embrace more remote work positions now that we've all learned a little more about how to do remote work through the pandemic? <laughs> that's a that's a really good question, and I'm gonna give this is Deke uh, probably not. We're we're looking at that right now. And I suspect that our situation looks a lot like the Weather Service, and that there's a a wide range of very strongly held opinions on what's best. And uh, I know that's an, in uh, kind of how we reconstitute in CEI is definitely um, a serious conversation that we're, we're having this uh, summer. So for the time being, 
the plan is for that the, the new post-COVID NCEI will be arranged a lot like the pre-COVID NCEI, but we certainly want to um, explore the status quo. That's a great question. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know who this one should be directed to. I'll just um, say the question and hopefully someone will pipe in. Um, there have been, or there has been some question in our office about the need to submit monthly WSB 14 forms. Uh, can you provide any guidance as to the process and timeline to submit these forms if they're still desired? So, so this is Mike, and I would say this might be one of those get back ones, um, yeah. because that might be something that's uh, really important to one of the product developers who's not on the call today, um, who would have a better answer than uh, the rest of us. Okay. All right. I'll note that one to do as a follow-up. Uh, let me just note the person. Um, I know that the next question is, I know there are um, national comparison maps. Is there a resource for regional versions? Uh, if not, is there a plan to have those produced? Thanks. Um, I'm assuming that they're referring, the person is referring to the climate normal maps, maybe? Um, uh, yeah, I can probably handle that one. The um... Uh, actually, we we don't quite have a plan for further map production at this point. We do have a tool that's at the Northeast Regional Climate Center that can provide uh, subsets of the normals. Uh, if you want a map of a normal that's looking over your WFO, for instance, uh, you can do that. Although I don't know if I I don't think that does comparisons at this point. This it's just simply the 1991-2020 normals, uh, monthly normals maps. Uh, we are going to be making available soon in June, in July, I believe, uh, the net CDF files for all the uh, normals, and so that would probably include a set of net CDFs for um, the 81-2010 also, so that one can do comparisons using uh, the spatial data, but. Uh, that's a good question, and we might consider uh, ramping up our regional mapping if, if, since there seems to be interest in that. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, and the last question I have so far, um, again, if you have a question, put it in the chat box. Um, I don't know if I missed this, but is Colorado still serviced under both WRCC and the Midwest RCC? So the short answer is uh, yes. It Colorado will still be served by a combination of the Western Regional Climate Center uh, and the High Plains Regional Climate Center, I believe, right? Not the uh, not the Midwest. Oops, sorry, I almost unmute, muted you. Um, yeah, I think it is the High Plains one. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so like I said, uh, it'll be a combination. We're largely uh, uh, dug in the central region uh, and uh, the High Plains Regional Climate Center uh, will service Colorado, uh, you know, roughly up to the mountains. And then the West uh, picks up both with the RCSD and the RCC roughly at the mountains to worry about those sorts of issues. Okay, um, I don't see any additional questions, but I have one last request, Mike, and that'll be on, I think it was on slide three, um, the map that you have on slide three, I was wondering if I could get a copy of that because we actually are working on, yeah, oh, that one, go one more, yeah. We're working on updating the operational guidance document um, that we're gonna be printing, and this is valid um, for everyone on the call. We're gonna be sending out um, the printed version, finally, of our updated, operational guidance document um, for National Weather Service Climate Services. Um, and we have an old version of that map, and now I need a new version since two of the RCCs have moved. So I was wondering if you can just send that to me real quick. Uh, yeah, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, I will try and uh, get my hands on a good high resolution version since you're gotcha. gonna be printing it. Yeah. Um, but it might have to wait, Tammy Houston's out on vacation for a couple oh, okay. of days, and she's the uh, the keeper of this right now. But I will uh, definitely. I was track wondering it who made it because you know the original file we the original one that we received was from Ellen McRae. So, 
Um, yeah. Okay, well, two I think our graphics people do it, but I believe oh. uh, Amy's the one who keeps it. Okay. So I'll get it. All right, thanks, Mike. Two more questions came in. Um, I think we have, yeah, we still have a few minutes. Um, I've had a hard time locating the number of days thresholds on the NCI site, such as number of days, 60 degrees or warmer, 70 degrees or warmer, et cetera. Where is the best place to find this? Um, this depends on whether you're looking for an individual or a group or a couple stations or whether you want it for a large set of stations. The um, if you look at the um, uh, access um, uh, part of our website, basically um, you can either get it from common access where you can select a set of stations and a set of variables uh, if you want. These would be in a monthly or annual seasonal values, of course, because you, you have to have a longer period of time to collect the number of, of uh, occurrences of of a threshold. So you can go to the common access part, which is what we call full access in the uh, on the normals web page, or you can go to the bulk access, which is if you want to file with all of those variables, um, we've tarred together all of the all the uh, data by variable and you can get a uh, download the tar and you get the entire nation's supply of of um, threshold exceedances uh, um, uh, in an individual file within that. Or you can go and grab a station file also in our bulk access uh, or a set of station files uh, for monthly or for seasonal annual that would have that information. There is a readme uh, on the, uh, the bulk access file to help guide you or you can uh, send me an email and I would be happy to help. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. And I think the one, the last con was a comment from um, Doug Cook. I think he was just trying to clarify um, the earlier question about Colorado saying it's a basin thing in terms of Western border of central versus West. Um, I'm assuming he means central versus West Colorado, sort of like the NWS. Um, okay, so I don't think there's any other questions. I am um, actually going to, Mike, I'm going to take back presentership if you don't mind um, so that I can share my screen so that you guys can see the uh, list of upcoming webinars. And again, this, this um, webinar is being recorded and as soon as Jim Z gets it processed and uploaded, we, um, we upload them to the National Weather Service Climate Services website. Um, there's a a link for seminars there and they're all listed there. Um, Andrea, do you have any parting words other than, I guess, uh, I'll thank, first of all, I wanna thank Andrea for organizing this and putting this together. And, and actually she she and Ray organized all of the seminars that you see on this list. So thank you very much. And Andrea, I'll, I'll leave you for parting words. Well, just thanks to our MCEI partners. And, um, you know, there are probably some creative ways that we could think of for the Weather Service to provide feedback maybe some interactive sessions, um, either by region or maybe even by position. Um, you know, have a climate focal point group, um, an Opal DAPM group, maybe a Sioux group, WCM, to kind of look at, at different aspects um, when you're looking at those questions you were talking about at the end, Deke. So maybe there are some creative ways we can, um, we can do that. So thank you um, to our NCEI speakers and thank you to all of the attendees and, Looking forward to a couple weeks from now, we're going to um, get some basics on the Madden-Julian oscillation with John Gottschalk at CPC.